Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's review the kinetic energy of a gas molecule. And it's not as simple as you would think, because typically when you think about kinetic energy, you think about one half mv squared, and that is indeed the case for a gas molecule, but there's additional kinetic energy a gas molecule can have. For example, a gas molecule, especially when it's diatomic or triatomic or something like that, if it's monatomic, it's simply only the kinetic energy due to translational motion. But if it's a diatomic molecule, it can also rotate. And there's two rotational motions it could have, so there's additional rotational kinetic energy the molecule can have. And then at higher temperatures, the molecule can also begin to vibrate and contain additional kinetic energy due to its vibration. So here we have a graph that kind of represents that. So here we see that solely, solely due to translational motion, it can have a certain amount of kinetic energy. The constant we use for that, which is the C sub V, the specific heat for constant volume, is 3 halves the gas constant. But if it also has additional rotational kinetic energy, that happens at higher temperatures, then you have to add another two, uh, two well, two times a half r, totaling a total of five halves r, meaning it's another 67% greater amount of kinetic energy than purely due to its translational motion because of rotational motion. And then if it can also begin to vibrate, it could add some additional kinetic energy as well. But that typically happens at much higher temperatures. So at room temperature, we're typically looking at uh, the both translational and rotational kinetic energy. So here you can see that the kinetic energy essentially consists of those three parts, but the vibrational kinetic energy is usually not part of that at typical room temperatures, at temperatures we're accustomed to. So remember that the RMS velocity we've seen before, let's say for oxygen, a diatomic molecule oxygen at 25 degrees Celsius, can be calculated as such. And here we have the explanation of what those variables mean. There's the gas constant, and there's a gas constant for a single molecule, which is simply R divided by Avogadro's number. M means the mass of a molecule. M means the mass of a mole of molecules, the molecular mass. So we can calculate the RMS velocity for oxygen, diatomic oxygen, at 298 Kelvin, and that would be 482 meters per second. Now, if we want to calculate the translational kinetic energy in terms of the velocity, we would do it like this. 32 times the mass of a single uh, nuclea, nucleon, and then multiply times the temperature, uh, the velocity squared times one half, and voila, there we have the kinetic energy due to translational motion for a single gas molecule. We can also use the equation 3 halves kT. K again, this is the gas constant divided by Avogadro's number, becomes this number right here, and we have that explained right there and multiply times the temperature times three halves and that's the same number of course we'd expect to get the same result regardless which method we use if we now want to find out the kinetic energy contained for an entire mole of molecules due to translational motion we simply multiply the kinetic energy for a single molecule times Avogadro's number to get the total kinetic energy translational kinetic energy of a mole of gas molecules and then if we want to include with that And then here, we add to that the rotational kinetic energy, so essentially it's five-thirds the amount of energy for just purely translational kinetic energy, and that ends up being this. Of course, if you want it for a single molecule, you have to take these numbers and divide it by Avogadro's number. And so that hopefully gives you a full picture of what we mean by the kinetic energy of a gas molecule. 